Association of Certified Mediators, I'd like to welcome you to How to Make $500 to $5,000 per day as a mediator trainer. In this webinar, what we're going to learn today is how to choose the best seminar title, the no-lose way to find seminar participants, three facts you must know about setting the registration fee, the absolute best time to market your webinars or your seminars, the jealously guarded secret of marketing for mediation seminars, how to quickly create your full-time income working part-time hours, the three most important things to avoid as a speaker, a simple technique for making $500 to $5,000 per day on a shoestring budget, training and certification for the mediator trainer. So those are the contents of this webinar. A mediator trainer's job is simply to teach others to become peacemakers. They are able to do this in the following settings. They can do it in business settings, neighborhood or community settings court settings, private practice, practically any place where there are others that need to be taught to become peacemakers. I believe that 2014 is definitely your lucky year and I will tell you why. With a little training, planning, and execution, this can be your lucky year. But when I use the word luck, I'm using it in a different sense. This is what I truly believe luck is. It is learning under correct knowledge. So if you learn under correct knowledge, you will have the success that you want. And this is a uh, term that was actually coined by Oprah Winfrey herself. Let me just tell you a little bit about my story and how I got involved with uh, mediation and mediation trainings. My name is Tanya Dominic Hagens, and um, I first began as a mediator and arbitrator. I earned my um, bachelor's degree from um, Bowling Green State University. Um, I have a master's of law uh, from Pepperdine University um, and the, the master's of laws in dispute resolution and then I also have a law degree from the University of Miami in Miami, Florida. And a little bit about my story, when I finished all those programs, I really wanted to be a mediator and an arbitrator and um, that's what I sought out to do and I was very successful at doing it. Um, and then one day, um, my uh, mother came up to me and she asked me to train her um, to become a mediator. She was retiring and she wanted something to do. Um, she thought that she had some very good skills that could be um, of use to others. And I said, Mom, there's so many different mediation training companies. You know, you can just choose one of them and um, get trained and then you can do either um, volunteer mediations or you can do mediations to get paid. Um, and she says, no, I really would like you to train me. Well, at the time, I was not a trainer, so I was kind of trying to get her to do a training with someone who had already done it. And what I found is I finally gave in. Of course, how can you say no to your mother? Um, I finally gave in, um, found out what I needed to do to actually teach um, others to become uh, mediators, and um, that's how it all got started. In my very first course, I had 14 students, and each one of them was um, paying me $299 um, for the training class. So I made about $4,186 in my first um, training class So uh, for two days' work. So that's where that came in, and I really immediately realized I do like this training. I actually like training um, to help others to become uh, mediators. But I also like the feeling of only having to work a little bit for a lot extra money. So um, that's how it all started. My first class was 14 mediators, and most of them were coming due to um, continuing education, getting continuing education hours. And we'll talk a little bit about that a little later in the webinar. But that's my story, and that's how I got started. And I've been doing this now in the mediation training for the last 16 years. So I have a lot of experience. I made a lot of mistakes and also learned a lot. And I want to share that with others. Um, I'd like to see mediation and conflict resolution spread throughout the world. And that's why I'm doing this training today. I strongly believe in what I do. And I strongly believe that creating peacemakers is really a benefit to our society. 
So in continuing, let's just talk about some of those things that make a great seminar whenever you're teaching a seminar. The first thing is choosing the best seminar title. So the first thing you want to do is gain attention. You immediately want someone to grab uh, their attention, make them want to know more about what you're doing, or you, better yet, you just want them to attend the seminar right away. Like as soon as they read your title, they're like, oh, this is something I want to do. And there are some key um, words that you can use to do that. Um, everybody wants to um, be able to become better, learn more. Um, there are some specific titles that you can use. So we use, we teach you in our program at the National Association of Certified Mediators how to choose those best seminar titles. But basically, anytime you want to do anything, hold a webinar, a seminar, a meeting at work, if you gain the people's attention and it makes it sound exciting, it makes people want to attend whatever you have to offer. So, and also choosing your seminar title, you don't want to have it very long. You want to keep it very short. Um, the shorter your title is, the greater the impact. Also, it makes the meaning powerfully clear to everyone who reads it. So, um, for example, the webinar you're attending today, it's called How to Make $500 to $5,000 a Day as a Mediator Trainer. You instantly know what it's about, and um, it's a very short title. Its briefness also makes it easy for people to recall your seminar. So if they're telling someone else about it, um, word of mouth is a really good form of advertisement. It makes it brief enough that people can remember it and recall it and tell others and also remember it for their own self. They can Google it and find you quickly. If you want to add more details, you can then use the subtitles, uh, a subtitle with your seminar title, like for example, the one we have today. You know, we could say something as the subtitle. Um, you know, within the next 30 days. So how to make $500 to $5,000 per day as a mediator trainer. And then if you want to add more, you know, do this in the next 30 days, within the next 30 days, something like that as your subtitle. What matters most is keeping your title as short as possible. So you want to keep your title short. So first you want to gain that attention and then keep it short. Also you want to quantify it you may want to use a number, a numerical number. For example, doesn't seven ways to earn today sound better than just saying um, better ways to earn? So you want to use something that people can quickly count, okay, I'll learn seven different ways to earn. Um, that's something that people like to know, like they want to, to quantify it. The latter is too vague, but the former asserts its intentions in almost a commanding way. The title lets you know immediately that you're going to find seven, and it's easy to imagine the word seven in capital letters than, re than ways to earn money today. So that's how you want to quantify it. It's good to put a number in there. Then um, you want to make sure that you're speaking the language of the people that you're advertising to. For example, if you're targeting teenagers, let's say you're targeting teaching teenager conflict resolution skills, then you have to speak their language and avoid formal or archaic words. You may even want to use some texting language. I'm just getting kind of cool with that. <laughs> um, my daughter actually taught me how to text. So, um, and they have all these different terms and words, and there's actually a dictionary of terms for texting. So if you were reaching out to a specific group, um, for example, if it was teenagers, you might want to use some of that in your title, seminar title. But if you're speaking to businessmen, then you should know that they're more likely to be impressed if you have um, Bill Gates as a guest than Lindsay Lohan. So if you're, you, you, you want to make sure that you're speaking to that audience. And you want your title to stand out. Make sure it's understood first. So what you could do is one of the ideas that I um, use often is just use a, an informal um, study group um, to actually assess the title. Let's say you are having teenagers. Let's say you have four or five teenagers that you know in your family or friends. Um, you can just have a small little focus group, ask them which titles work best for them. Or if you're doing it for business people, have four or five business people that are around or attorneys. Just ask them to make sure that it's understood clearly. 
so a focus group is a great way to find the best seminar title. Also, there's a no way, uh, no lose way to find seminar participants. Um, seek out your professionals who already have relationships with your target audience. For example, um, we may look to sometimes talk to paralegal associations of individuals who might want to become mediators. So in order to market to those individuals, we would go to those professional organizations and ask them simply, you know, how can we partner with you to make something um, happen for your membership to add a benefit, always adding value. And sometimes you can ask them to promote your event to their mailing list. In exchange, you can give them 50% of the revenue for every person they bring in. Or you can change it to 20% or 10% or whatever you agree to them with them. So um, it may be a win-win um, partnership. Now, some organizations cannot do that. So if you're approaching professionals who cannot accept a revenue share, offer their clients a discount instead. So for example, all of your members will receive a 10% discount if they attend our webinars or our seminar. This allows your joint venture partners to offer something of value to their clients. So it looks very good for the organization. You know, we're get their, on their part, they're able to offer discounts to their um, members who may want to advance their credentials. The no lose way to found participants also involves asking for referrals from past seminar attendees. And it can be very simple. Um, what we do at the end of our seminars many times is on the actual evaluation form, we ask them to refer three friends. So it could be something very simple like that. Or you just simply send out an email asking for referrals. And then you can also do a revenue share with them that you would give them um, maybe a gift or um, some type of book or something that you've created in exchange for that. The best time to do this is before they leave your seminar, though, um, because you have their captive attention. They're excited. They're happy about the information they've learned. So they're more willing to share that information with you as um, like-minded friends. Just include a space on your evaluation forms, as I said before, to list the names and addresses. And of course, the most important information you probably want to get is telephone number and email address of those individuals who might be interested in attending another event. Now, there's three facts you must know when you set your registration fee. One, you want to know your audience. So um, we use the Bureau of Labor Statistics to find out the audiences um, that may be interested in our particular group. And it's really important to know your audience because if you're marketing to teachers, their expendable income may not be as much as someone is who's an attorney, for example. So, and you want to look at how much they've paid in the past for their particular continuing education or different programs that they may have. So look at your audience. It's very important in first determining who is your audience first. Then the second thing you want to know is does that audience require continuing education? Many professions require continuing education, um, attorneys, counselors, social workers, um, teachers, nurses, and so forth. So if that audience is required to already complete continuing education, you want to fashion your course um, like a continuing education course so that they will get a double benefit. They will learn these skills that you're teaching them, but they also will complete their continuing education courses. And in our um, program that we teach individuals to become mediator trainers, we actually have sample applications of what that looks like to fashion your training as a, um, a continuing education course. And then you want to figure out your total cost. So you want to know all your expenses that you will need, or it's copies, um, rental space, all of that. So you need all of that in order to know how much to set for your registration fee. Now the absolute best time to market. Well, it's usually at the end of the year as the New Year's resolutions are being formulated or at the beginning of the year once resolutions are confirmed. And that's a really good time to fill up your training courses. However, 
um, you can also do it during the year or at the end of the year when continuing education hours are needed. So many people are um, very excited about um, finishing their continuing education or getting their continuing education hours. And so you want to make sure you market to those individuals. And we show you ways that you can find out how, when those continuing education hours are due for particular professions. And then six weeks, six to eight weeks prior to the course. So you don't want to send an advertisement out four months in advance for um, a training course because people simply forget about it. There's many things that keep people busy uh, throughout the year. Um, but six to eight weeks prior to the course is more than enough notice for most individuals. The longest you may want to go out is 12 weeks prior to the course, um, but six to eight weeks prior will keep your course field. Now some jealously guarded secrets of marketing for mediation seminars are working with professional organizations, and we reviewed that a little bit. Um, the power of networking. It's a two-way street, so always when you approach some organization, come to them and say, how, do, how can I add value to your organization? You want to always come from the area of how much can I give. And um, I strongly believe in abundance, giving in abundance. If you give in abundance, there will always be enough for you to receive. So always approach individuals from the area of how can I help you or help your membership have value. Also, you can do blind shopping. Um, we do a lot of blind shopping of other um, companies. And what you're doing is you're simply calling around to different training companies, seeing what they offer, how many times a year they offer, especially within your area, and then seeing what you could do that's different um, from all of the other organizations. And I'll just share one of um, the blind shopping uh, things that I, that I discovered early on. Most of the companies that were doing training during the time when I was doing it, um, they pr pretty much just simply had like a course, a 40-hour course or a two-day basic mediation course, and then people sat there and they took the course and then they got a certificate. Well, we did something a little different. At the end of our five-day courses, we would always have what's called a potluck, and it was a family potluck kind of deal. And what we would do is simply bring in something from our family, because it was about family mediation. And we had each person explain how that family dish bonded the family or things that happen around the family issue, but what it did for the participants, it gelled the participants themselves, and it gave them a great feeling about the seminar as it was ending. So uh, we tied it into um, our actual curriculum, that piece about the potluck. So it was really, really interesting, and we got a lot of referrals just because of it, because we created relationships and um, a bonding experience that wasn't experienced at any of the other uh, seminars locally. We also strongly believe in keeping our customer satisfaction level above 99%. So looking at those things, and you will receive uh, seminar evaluations sometimes that are not always positive, but that's a great thing because guess what? Those make you stronger. Those make you better because you can change it. There's nothing that you can't change unless they just didn't like you as a human being. But um, other than that, you can change whatever it is. If it was too cold in the room or if it was too difficult for parking, any of those things you can change. So always look at your customer service surveys and then making sure that you improve each time. So use those to improve. And one of the things that I, that's not on this slide, but something that you always want to think of is always give an abundance. So if someone, exchange an abundance. So if someone is um, paying for a seminar, they're expecting what they've always had. Um, we always went over and above, gave them very nice plaques when they got finished um, with their training program, um, things that just are not expected. So always give an abundance. Now, how do you create full-time income working part-time hours? It's really not difficult, and I'll just put a little um, snippet here. For example, let's say you have a goal of 10 participants for each seminar, and they're each paying $4.99 for a two-day weekend course, which is not um, a, a very difficult thing to do. Um, and then for your total revenue, you would have $4,990 for two days' work. 
So 10 participants, it's really not difficult um, to get those 10 participants in. And we'll talk about that in a little bit um, in a couple slides from now. So the three important things to avoid as a speaker are humor mistakes. So you have to be very careful with your humor, um, making sure that it's appropriate. Obviously, you want to, don't want to do uh, religion. You may not want to do anything about sports, especially if you're in a town like if you're in Alabama. You don't want to talk about the other teams in Alabama because you really never know who's on what side. Um, you want to make sure that your humor is something that may be gener generic um, and not those touchy subjects that people get very uh, riled up about, like religion, politics, um, those kinds of things. So you want to make sure that you don't have those humor mistakes when we talk about those. Um, any noticeable anxiety if you're fidgeting, moving around. Um, one of the best things that you could do, uh, possibly when you first start teaching, is actually film yourself and watch what you're doing. If you're you're touching, you know, you, you have your hands in your pocket the whole time or you're touching your legs the whole time or crossing your arms, that has a noticeable difference to the audience and they really do pay attention to those things. So any type of noticeable anxiety. Also just boring the audience to death. Make sure that you have enough interactive exercises and um, the training that we provide, we also we always make sure that we teach a little and then allow the participants to actually learn by doing. So you don't want to bore the audience just lecturing them the whole time. So this is a simple technique and just really something brief. We go over this a lot more in depth in our training program, our 30-day training program. But postcards are a great way on a shoestring budget um, for you to simply fill up your webinars. And postcards, if many of you know, um, you pay less than you would a regular um, postage stamp. And it, it depends on whether you're a nonprofit organization or um, not. But you could send out 500 postcards, for example, for an amount of $120. Um, and it may be cheaper if you're a nonprofit. Um, organization. But let's say um, this is these little numbers here are number one, two, three, four, five, six, and they represent months. So normally when you send out uh, mailing, um, there is a 2% response rate. So if I sent out in month one 500 postcards, in month two sent out 500 postcards, and then month three sent out 500 postcards, then in month three, that would be my first training. Let's say I'm heralding my first training. So that is 1,500 postcards times 2%. That would be 30 people that I would have for that seminar. And so if we did that, if we think about it like that, and we had um, 4.99 as the rate, that would be $14,970. And I've only spent $120 for three months to advertise that that seminar. And um, many of you say, well, I might need, you know, a website and I might need um, someone to answer the phone. I can show you how to do all those things without spending exorbitant amounts of money. But this is how I started in the very beginning, just having basic advertisement about continuing education and I geared it mainly towards attorneys, social workers, and counselors. And let's say you did that for another three months. So already in the first six months of the year, um, you would make around about $30,000, $29,000 for the first six months of the year. So it's just something to think about um, if you were to do them every three months. Some people just have decided to do a basic training once a month. They only want 10 participants once a month. So if you did it like that, if you do 5,000 times um, 12 months, that's $60,000. Um, that is certainly a way to get that filled up. So these are just some examples just to give you an idea of how you can work that training schedule. Now, when you do training with the National Association of Certified Mediators, it is a 30-day online train, train the mediator training, trainer course. However, what we do, we normally have it all online. For the month of February only, we're going to be doing it live. 
So um, the participants that will be doing the training um, will be able to ask me, Tanya, any questions that you have at all. Um, and I will be meeting with each of the participants once a day. We normally hold that in the evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so that people um, wherever they are, are able to attend. We also record those lessons so if you're unable to attend for any reasons, um, you're able to um, listen to that recording. You also will receive a certificate of completion from NASM um, upon com successful completion. You'll receive all the curriculum to conduct your courses. So you don't have to go out and purchase anything else other than making copies for your seminar participants, but you get all of the curriculum. So it's like a business in a box. And trust me, this took years and years um, for me to accumulate all of this information, all the role plays, but you actually get all of this information with it. And you get all of the marketing materials, marketing materials to effectively start earning income in the next 60 days as a mediator trainer. So you figure it takes 30 days to train um, and another 30 days if you wanted to do an advertisement and um, you could actually start your first trainer um, in the next 60 days. Now what will you receive if you do the training with us, our trainer trainer course? You'll have the ability to create another stream of income of $500 to $5,000 per day. You'll be able to expand your existing mediation practice um, you'll get all the training you need um, completed online so you don't have to travel um, to or from a class. You don't have to find parking. You'll receive your certification. You'll actually receive a certification card and a certificate um, from the National Association of Certified Mediators. We'll provide you with sample CEU or continuing education applications. You'll get a student training manual, sample brochures, sample postcards, observer feedback forms to use in your courses, lesson evaluation forms, cost analysis sheets, um, website marketing ebook, and you'll be empowered with training materials to conduct a successful training session. All the curriculum, all the PowerPoint presentations, role play exercises, training exercises, and marketing literature. These are all things that I had to find out the hard way and help it took me 16 years to develop, but this is something that would, um, is um, available to you. Now normally our training program is $9.99 per student for the 30-day train the mediator uh, trainer program, but we are having a special to the end of this month. Um, we are offering a $4.99 special. That $499 can also be broken up into two payments if you want to do one payment at the very beginning and one payment at the end before you receive your certification. Um, that is possible as well. If you act today, we are actually going to throw in some bonus gifts and this is only for those who act today. Um, the first bonus is I believe that everybody should have a website. So we actually will design and um, set up your um, website for you. Um, a five-page website. So it'll be a basic website, um, but it'll be a very nice website, but it's a free basic web di website design for five pages. So you'll be ready to go. The only thing you will have to pay for is hosting, and we can show you some really good companies that charge a little as five dollars a month for um, website hosting. So um, you'll have a website. So if you looked at the value of what you're receiving, the trainer trainer course, which is usually $9.99, plus the website design is $4.99, that would be $4.98. That's with the first bonus gift. We'll also do a basic logo design. So these are samples of other websites, uh, I mean, logo designs that we've actually completed for past participants. Um, and if you look at some of these basic logo designs, you'll actually receive your own basic logo design. So with the trainer trainer course, the website design and the logo design, you're already getting $18.97 in value. In addition to that, we will also provide you with your business cards. So you'll receive 250 um, business cards as well, and that's a $50 value. So we're up to $1,902. And I think the best part of all of this is one hour professional coaching from me, myself, and I personally. 
one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And you can ask me whatever questions. Um, use my brain. That's what I want. And normally, I charge a $250 per hour for professional coaching, and that would be absolutely free for that. So we're already up to $2,197 worth of gifts if you purchase today. But we are doing it for $4.99 for the first 20 to enroll um, today. And so with a couple of dollars and a little effort and 30 days, you can start raking in the profits too. Um, I'm going to give you everything, all the information and the instruction you need to become certified. You're going to be able to follow a simple step-by-step -step course and easily pass the certification test and become certified in 30 short days. Just imagine being able to earn serious money as a certified mediator trainer in less than a month. Just imagine being able to pay off your debts and buy a new car or take nicer vacations or buy more expensive toys or whatever you want to do. Just being a, imagine being able to impress your friends and your family with your newfound success. And just imagine being able to perhaps quit your job and work for yourself as a certified mediator trainer. Now is the time to make a decision. The way I see it, you really only have two options here. You can leave here right now and then decide the 30-day training and mediator training program is not right for you. You can keep away at your job and keep wondering if there's something more to life. Or you can decide that you deserve a better chance at a real life, a life that is worth living. You can finally break free from your job, your stress, and your worries. You can watch as your bank account grows with each and every week. And you can start living your dreams as a professional mediator, mediator trainer. It really is up to you. So let me just tell you some of the other parts that are in the Train the Trainer course. So we're going to go over professional media speaker skills. So you'll use adult learning principles, um, analyzing training requirements, developing learning objectives, selecting your training methods, how to develop and use training aids. You'll also learn the marketing piece. And this is the most important part of any type of business that most people forget about. They have all these wonderful skills. And I'll tell you, me personally, I learned this lesson the hard way many, many years ago. I used to teach aerobics. I opened up a gym. It was called aerobics only. And I had the state-of-the-art equipment. I had the best um, sound system. I had the best um, uh, weight machines, the mirrors, the everything. Everything in the gym was absolutely beautiful. And no one was coming. And I didn't understand. I thought because it was on a main thoroughfare that everybody would attend. However, this is a part that I miss, is the marketing. So I look at my failures as your successes, and it actually became my success because I learned if you don't bring the people there, you won't be successful. So this is the whole component to a successful mediator trainer business. Basically, you'll learn in the marketing piece how to find participants, how to register participants. Um, you'll learn all the, and you'll receive all the marketing materials um, provided. You'll also have curriculum de delivery, step-by-step -step instructions for delivering the training program, what to say, when to say it, when to do the role play exercise, when not to have the role play exercise. So you'll have that. And you'll learn how to teach people in the following areas, business, family, divorce, and basic mediation. You'll also learn cost analysis so that you make sure that your training is priced for success. You'll also learn how to get started immediately as a trainer. So you, we don't want this to be a course where you simply are um, taking a course and then you don't use it. I hate to see that when people go to a training course and they're not able to apply it. We know that when you're finished with this course, if this is something you really decide that you want to do, you would be able to get started immediately as a trainer. Pablo Picasso said, action is the foundational key to all success. So we need action. And so we're asking that if you're really interested in this to get those um, additional bonus gifts, we ask you to register now. And you can simply go to mediatorcertification.org. And if you have any questions, um, actually Leslie is available today. She is in the office. So you can give her a call at 877-850-0052. And once again, that is a $4.99 special with the additional bonus gifts of the website, the logo, 
the um, business cards and the free coaching um, for purchasing today. So you can register now at www.mediatorcertification.org. If you have any questions, what I'm going to do is open up the lines now to see if anybody has any questions. If not, there will be um, availability of questions. You can ask Leslie at any time by dialing this number as well. Just one moment. I'll open up the lines now. Okay. Are there any questions? 